this router has AI built into it. Like, really? Why do we want that in our routers? That was my first thought when ASUS sent over the ROG Rapture GT BE 19000 AI. And so, my mission is to find out what this can actually do, who is it for, and who is it not for. I will say that it looks pretty great. I kind of like it in white and it's got the eight antennas that can be independently adjusted so you get the maximum coverage around your home. Now on the back, it's got a whole bunch of ports. It's got a 10 gigabit WAN LAN port where you get your internet access. And then it's also got another 10 gigabit port which is where I'm gonna connect my main computer to get the maximum speed. It's also got 2.5 gigabit ports, which is great. Definitely gonna be hooking up my NAS storage to one of those. And then it's got the one gigabit ethernet port. Now, it also has here on the side, a USB 3 port and one USB 2 port. So you can plug in things like your external hard drive or even tether your 4G LTE or 5G modem. So just from the outside, it feels like a big emphasis on connectivity options, speed beyond your normal, hey, just get me Wi-Fi type of router. Let me put that down. Now, on this cool packaging that this comes in, the one thing that caught my eye is they say it's got a built-in NPU. So, what does that mean? You see, this router actually has not one, but two separate systems. It has a router core, and it has an AI core. Now, the router core is like a chef in a busy Michelin five-star fancy schmancy restaurant. The chef's role is to manage the entire team and get customers' orders out as quickly as possible. That's the router core. It's the brain of that handles the connectivity and other functions of the device, so you get that nice fast connections. And of course, that's standard functionality on routers. But this router also has that additional system, the AI core. That is like having a consultant in that busy five-star Michelin restaurant whose job is to constantly monitor everything that's going on in the kitchen and constantly optimize the service based on what's going on in that restaurant. In this router, the AI core is not just a piece of optimizing software, but it's a completely separate system. So much so that it has its own four gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of storage, and that NPU. It even has a smaller computer brain and even its own power. And this is important. Because the AI core is independent of the router core, it can continuously run those optimization scans without negatively impacting performance. So my next task is now to go and set this up, give it a couple of days and figure out what this AI thing is all about. Do we want AI in a router? That's the question and who is it for? I'll be right back. One eternity later. Okay, so it's been a bunch of days, the router is all set up, and let's dive in, and I'm gonna show you exactly what I discovered. So this is the first thing we see. We see a brand new interface with a fresh coat of paint, which is really, really nice. If you've seen my previous ASUS videos, you'll know that this is completely, completely different. They've got this card concept going on here. So you've got your information in these little cards telling you about the clients, the mesh nodes are connected, DNS benchmarks, system status, tells you which ports are currently being used, whether it's connected or unplugged. You can even change your RGB lighting on your router itself if that's your vibe and you want to play with that. It picked up that I've connected a flash drive to my router, so that's good to see with the how much space it's got and then how much space it's got left, which is cool. You got this thing called a traffic monitor, so you can see basically how much traffic's been used at any point in time and how many wireless devices were connected at that time. If we scroll further down, this is cool. So this is Wi-Fi Insights. And essentially what it does, it shows you a visual representation of what's going on in the Wi-Fi space and if there's any interference. The blue is essentially where I am. I'm currently on channel five and channel five is down here. So basically means that nothing is interfering with my 2.4 gigahertz at channel five. Now, if I was at channel eight or nine, Look how much interference there is in those channels. Look down here. Look how many interference there is here. But because I'm sitting down here, there's no need to optimize it because I'm already in a good spot. This is the first time we can actually visually see within the router what's going on around us. This is 
pretty sweet. We know that routers are supposed to automatically select the correct channel for you. Well, now you can see if it actually does it. Now let's look at the five gigahertz. Hey, look at that, speaking of automatically, it was optimized automatically to channel 100. So obviously picked some stuff up, as you can see here, and it decided, hey, we're gonna make some changes and we're gonna get you to a better spot. And if we look at the six gigahertz, no interference on this particular spectrum. I like this, this is nice. It's nice to visually see something that we've been dealing with basically since the inception of Wi-Fi routers. Now we know what's going on. Right, let's scroll further up here. Now here, ask your router assistant. So how do I change my Wi-Fi SSID? And there we go. Go to your network, select a network for the main uh, for main or guest network, then choose the option to change the SSID. Now I can either do it later, or if I click on go, it takes you there. It's like your personal assistant helping you answer questions as opposed to you having to Google it and trying to figure it out. Let's go back to the dashboard. Let's see what's next. So expand that. So the AI mesh here is where you can add additional AI mesh nodes. And you can see I've already added one in my kitchen. Next up on this list is Adaptive QoE. Okay, now this is where this thing gets really wild. Now, many routers have this thing called a QoS, which is quality of service. Basically, it's like the traffic cop inside your router where you set a certain set of rules and the cop follows those rules. So you say to the cop, Hey, whenever I'm watching Netflix, you make sure that that gets priority over everything else. Or whenever I'm doing an online meeting, you gotta make sure that that gets priority over everything else. I don't care what's going on in the network at the time. You're the cop, you direct the traffic, so I get the best connectivity. You set the rules, the traffic cop or the QoS does exactly that. Now, here is where things get interesting. The ROG Rapture GTBE 19000 AI has QoE, which is quality of experience. This is different to the Traffic Cop QoS. What QoE does is actually look at how happy and satisfied the people are on your network with what they're doing at that very moment. So if you're doing a Zoom call and you're cutting out, then the QoE says, oh, hold on a second, let me fix that for you. If somebody else is trying to watch a 4K Netflix show when there's a big lag, QoE jumps in and go, hey, hold on, let me fix that for you also. And that's the big difference. QoS is hard rules. You get 10 megabits per second, you get five megabits per second, stop complaining. Whereas QoE is like, oh, hold on, I see you sounding like a robot during your meeting because you're lagging, let me fix that. And the best bit is you don't have to be that geek to figure out how to set this up because of this. All right, so firstly, you wanna make sure that the QoE switch is obviously set to on. And you've got three panels here. You've got kind of information, what this is, what's going on. You've got this diagram here representing the kind of traffic and what it's doing and where it's going. And then you've got here a couple of modes. Now, I'm gonna leave AI balance for a second. Let's start with gaming. If you've got gamers, well, they're gonna love this. It says, hey, I'm gonna give priority to gaming stuff. So you're gonna have reduced latency and jitter ensuring a smoother and more stable gaming experience. And you got this little tuner here that you can say, I wanna be super aggressive or I wanna kind of let the AI decide what it needs to do. Now, streaming, that's perfect. You're doing lots of YouTubing and you lots of uh, Netflix watching. Well, then you want the best experience for that. So you choose streaming. And streaming is traffic to minimize buffering and reduce quality degradation. So you're gonna have the best multimedia experience. Then you got your work from home. Now, work from home prioritizes for your online meetings and gives streaming needs higher priority over file transfers. So if you're busy with a video conferencing for work and somebody is uploading a bunch of gigabytes of data to your backup or in my case to the editor, well, the two are not gonna interfere with each other. We're both gonna get the experience that, that we need, but the priority is gonna to be to make sure I don't get disconnected or sound like a robot because it's buffering so badly. Then you got the office environment. Now in this environment, you could have multiple people in a small office. And the idea with this is that it still prioritizes the online meetings and accelerates documents and file transfers to maintain a stable, productive office environment. 
pretty common in an office. They have people sharing documents, uploading things to servers, uh, common areas where you can kind of download your documents. So it kind of does that work. Now, if you're still not sure which one to go for, well, then you go for the AI balance mode. And here you say to the AI, look, here is all the stuff that I have going on in my network. You decide. You allocate the network resources to balance everything out. You're going to balance gaming, streaming, and daily tasks for smooth and stable performance. Now, unfortunately, it's not super easy to show you the difference between all these environments unless we set up a real test scenario with a bunch of computers. If you want to see that and a deep dive into that, please let me know in the comments. I just leave everything in balance, and I find that balance just seems to give us the best experience, which is exactly what this thing does. Most people just want the same thing from their router, a nice, stable, fast connections without having to constantly play and tinker with settings and optimize it the entire time. And that is exactly what the AI does for you in this router. Now, there is one more feature that I wanna show you that initially I didn't really pay attention to, but I'm glad I did. So if we open up our menu here, there is something called the AI board. In my AI board, I've got here the router assistant, which we've seen up here. I've got a bunch of options that can install some advertising blocking, which is pretty cool. Enable AI protection, which you get with this router. You get the AdGuard home, or you can get the AdGuard DNS, and you can simply install and set this up. But what I want to focus on is something called the Docker, Docker management. Now, Docker, for those who don't know, is like a virtual machine, a VM. Think of a computer within a computer. This basically allows us to install applications on the router itself and be able to access it from within our network. So let me show you what that looks like. Click on open and you get this little screen here. Looks a bit intimidating, but it really isn't. You've got here your local Docker and you've got here your containers. Click on that. And you can see I've already installed a bunch of things here. I've got the Home Assistant and I've got N8N, which is a AI workflow automation server. So here's my Home Assistant. Now, if I open up the Home Assistant one, I get the screen and I can create my smart home and I can connect all my smart devices and manage it from one location. But the cool thing is here is that it all runs on my router. This means I no longer have another device on my network to handle the Home Assistant or another device to handle my N8N AI development stuff. If you're technical and like to tinker a little bit and set up certain media servers as an example, Docker is pretty awesome and loads of documentation online on how to do this. So after using this router for quite a bit now, I've got some thoughts and I wanna start with who this router is not for. Yep, uh, if you have three or four devices at home and you're just streaming some movies, sending a bunch of emails with some web browsing and you currently don't have any issues with your connectivity or latency, this router is gonna be an overkill for you. ASUS has a whole range of other Wi-Fi routers. A lot of them I've covered on this channel. They're gonna do the job just as well for you. Now, if you are someone who absolutely needs and wants the best internet speed at all times, and you have loads of devices and family members all doing different things at any one time, this is an absolute beast of a router. The AI bit of optimizing the Wi-Fi and data based on what each device is doing and experiences that they need to have is an absolute game changer and a pleasure. And it does this automatically and constantly adapts to whatever is going on at that time. And that's the power of AI. Now, I know some of you absolutely hate AI. You keep telling me about that, and that is fine. You do you. Just remember that people also said that the horse would never replace a car, the internet would never replace the yellow pages, and nobody needs apps on their phone when they have email. So again, if none of this excites you, and you just wanna watch your YouTube, then kind of this isn't for you. We don't all need the same things, but at the same time, and to be fair, you cannot compare this router to another router purely based on price because they're just not the same thing. They do different things. A family SUV is great for grocery shopping and taking the family out for dinner. But you wouldn't compare that with a sports car, which is all about luxury and speed. It doesn't mean one is right and the other one is wrong. It just means you have different needs and that is perfectly fine. 
I have a link in the description below so you can get more information if you want that next level router and it is a next level router and check out this video right over here showing you how the government is actually restricting the speed of your router and what you can do about that before you head out give the video a quick thumbs up and I'm going to see you in this video over here let's go